Well, it is time for another video. And as you can see from my setup, I have a little different background than usual, and I'm finally unpacked and getting settled into my new studio space. So I'll have some new content that'll deviate a little bit from the norm, some more commentary, and possibly some interviews with some mold makers. So stay tuned for that. But in this video, I wanted to talk about clear casting resin, and more specifically, polyurethane clear casting resins. Now, one of the common problems when you're casting clear polyurethane resin is typically if you're using a clear resin, you're doing so because you want it to look like glass or have that high clarity. And I was talking to Troy over at BJB about this because I was using his Water Clear 786. This is WC 786. And this is a great resin for making aftermarket car parts and clear prototypes. Has excellent physical properties for both indoor and outdoor applications. But as you can see from this part, this is a little nut that I molded off an original galvanized steel nut. The original part, because it's steel and it has that matte texture, that translates into the mold, which of course goes back to the, the cast part, giving us that kind of frosted look which of course doesn't really look like glass. It looks more like shower glass, but not necessarily high polished, clear glass like most people think of. And the reason I wanted to address this is that was a phone call I got a lot with people that were new to casting clear resins, is typically the scenario would be something like this where they would wanna mold a face or a hand and then cast that up in clear resin. But the problem is when you do that, you have all that surface texture that then translates into that kind of frosted glass look. Uh, for instance, this is a PLA part that I molded in a previous video. And you can see on this PLA part, all of those little build lines translate into kind of a frosted look on the final part. So if you're looking for that high polished glassy kind of look that people associate with clear materials, uh, this is kind of a spoiler of that effect. So what I was talking to Troy about was uh, I'd run across a couple of different brands of two-part clear gloss finishes that are available from high-end automotive supply places like uh, English Color. And what I wanted to do is take a pattern that uh, I know is going to ultimately be cast in clear and finish that pattern using that high gloss and then see how that translates into the mold and then of course into the final cast part. So to give you an idea, this is a, an ear part. I've cast this up in a lot of previous videos, but you notice with this ear, since it's taken from a life cast mold, that uh, fine skin texture there, even though that's really smooth, it still gets that kind of frosted glass look. So yes, this is a clear material, but it winds up having that kind of frosted glass kind of look. So what I did is I applied the two-part clear to the original pattern, remolded it, and lo and behold, I actually got some really good results doing that. So you can see here, we have that nice kind of icy, glossy glass kind of finish. And that's exactly what we want with our clear. And I mainly introduced this technique to you because this is one of those things that it's not going to be suitable for every application, but those of you molding more organic artwork and things like that, things that aren't necessarily uh, parts like this that would lend themselves to polishing, this is a great technique to get a nice glossy, glassy look on your final part without a lot of wet sanding and polishing and that sort of thing. So in this video, in addition to that little trick, we're also going to just discuss some basic do's and don'ts of working with clear casting resins to make sure that you get your best finish possible right out of the mold so you don't have to do a lot of polishing and work after the fact. So let's get started. Now to begin, let's go over five important tips for casting polyurethane clear resins. Now, first of all, I always recommend using platinum silicone molds for casting clear polyurethane resins. The reason for this is tin cure silicones exude alcohol and some more than others. And that can cause the surface of your polyurethane resin to fog when you're casting polyurethane clears. So real important there, remember that sometimes you can get that kind of foggy effect on some parts coming out of tin cure molds. So you can avoid that by using platinum silicone. 
Now, number two, degas your silicone. For the best results, you want to always make sure you're degassing your silicone when you're making a mold for casting clear polyurethane resin. And this just gives you a much better surface quality. Now, also, when you're casting, it's a good idea to always cast between 40 and 60 PSI. And that ensures that you get bubble-free casts out of your molds. Now, number four is the main thing we're addressing in this video, and that is always mold smooth or polished patterns. And what I mean by that is when you're molding a rough part with a lot of texture, that's not going to really communicate the best properties of a clear casting resin. So if you want the best properties out of your clear casting resin, ideally you should be molding and casting smooth parts, and that way that really gets that nice glass-like finish. And last but not least, number five is use warm molds for your casting. If you warm up your molds to around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, that ensures that you get a much better surface property and much better curing in thin sections than you get with room temperature molds. Now for this experiment, I grabbed a few different patterns from around my shop. I was most curious about how the ear would perform because with that skin texture, typically parts like that are really tricky to get a nice glossy clear on. So that was the main one I wanted to see what it would do. And what I used is a two-part clear gloss and this is available from a lot of different automotive paint stores and this is a two-part system that's activated in the can and the instructions are on the can and they are very specific so make sure if you're doing this follow the directions on that can exactly and i can't stress this enough you see the warning there on the screen make sure you're working in a well ventilated area you can't see my face here but i'm wearing a respirator with the appropriate filters on it Real important, not a dust mask, but an actual respirator with filters because you do not want to breathe in any material like this. Since this is a two-part material, that means it's catalyzing and actually forming a fine layer of resin on the cast parts there. And that's where we get that nice gloss effect is rather than a traditional lacquer, we're actually applying a very thin veneer of resin over the part. Now this is after about four or five coats and you can already see that has a nice glossy effect. And I let these parts cure overnight so they were completely cured before I made my platinum silicone mold because again, this is a platinum silicone mold so you wanna be careful about cure inhibition, but that 2K clear gloss works well with platinum silicone provided you allow it to cure completely. Now, this is an important step I'm doing here. You notice I'm just applying petroleum jelly release around my pattern to the baseboard. I'm not applying it to the actual pattern. I'm not worried about silicone sticking to that ear, to that resin ear, or to that clear coat, but I am concerned about it grabbing onto that foam core board. So I'm just applying the release to that, to the board, and not to the ear. Now, the reason for that is really critical here. Some spray releases can actually dull the surface of your part, even with that high gloss like that, and take away that gloss effect, giving you a matte part, which is exactly what we want to avoid. So you want to be really careful when you're molding parts that you want to have a high gloss effect on them. So what I'm doing here is pouring this at a slight angle. I'm pouring TC5130F. This is a fast setting platinum silicone. And I'm pouring it at that slight angle to make sure I don't trap any air under the back side of that ear, under that undercut area of the ear. Now this has a working time of about eight minutes at room temperature and a demold time of right around an hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out and we're ready for casting. That's one of the nice things about keeping that 5130F around your shop is it's a low viscosity, fast setting system. So it's great for quick turnaround time on parts like this. Great, just general purpose shop silicone to work with. Now you can see my pattern is nice and clean and you can see from the inside of the mold, see that gloss effect. You can already see the effect of that versus the other 5110F mold I had that was molded off just the regular ear. So the one on the right there, you can already see the difference in the way that mold is much more glossy and shiny. And now we're ready to mix up some Water Clear 786. And of course, this is mixed one-to-one -one by volume or 100A to 96B by weight.
Now this particular resin system is available in several different set times. I'm using the fastest version of this. This, this version has about a five minute working time and then around a 45 minute to one hour demold when we're casting these really small parts. Now important note about that mix ratio, I can do it by volume, but I typically do it by weight for these kind of batches and that way I can be as precise as possible. Now you'll notice I'm using a stainless steel spatula for my mixing and the reason for that is if you're working with a polyurethane clear you want to do anything you can to avoid introducing moisture into that mix and using a wooden stir stick is one way to do that especially if you live in a really humid climate like in Houston, Texas or New Orleans, Louisiana you have to be really careful about introducing moisture by using wooden stir sticks. So a stainless steel spatula gets us around that. Now this has a five minute working time, so I have more than enough time to pour all of my molds, get those filled up and subject those to pressure. And I'm not gonna cover the pressure casting process in this video, but for the record, these were cast at just under 60 PSI. And that's ideal for getting nice bubble free casts. Now the first few casts I'm gonna demold, these have matte surfaces. So these first two ears, both of these had just the regular skin texture right out of the mold from the original part. And you see how those are nice and clear and bubble free, but they do have that matte surface because of that skin texture. So you see both of those have that kind of slightly frosted glass kind of look. And now we get to check the results of our ear cast in that glossy mold. And you see that made a big difference. And it already has that, that kind of icy clear look just right out of the mold. So much better results from that. So great tip for those of you that are molding artwork or parts where you want to get a high gloss finish. You can always hit your patterns first with that 2K gloss and then mold that glossy part and that way every part that comes out of the mold has a nice high gloss effect and that minimizes a lot of the sanding and polishing that you might have to do later. Now as usual all of the products I used in this video will be linked in the video description so be sure to check those out and check the end screen. I'll post some links to previous tutorials related to molding and casting and of course vacuum degassing silicone. And as always if you haven't already be sure to like and subscribe and of course thanks for watching.